you just may be the nicest thing that's happened to me in a long time. You know that, Counselor? We have to get to one, Marsh. No, I did not know the Kyle Richardson. Oh, hi. We've been expecting you. I'm Lauren Michaels. Nice to know you. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Yes, Lauren? Good. I'll be right on. You're still contagious. No sexual contact with anyone until it's cleared up? Isn't there a chance I could have picked it up any other way? No, I'm afraid not. You married? Uh, no, no, I'm single. And there's uh, nothing you can give me. Well, I'll prescribe something that will help with the symptoms, maybe even shorten the outbreak. Other than that, there's not much I can do. Hello, Tom. Steve, welcome. Right with you. Give me your name again. Um, Tolbert. Ned Tolbert. T-O-L-B-E-R-T. You live around here? I'm just here for the summer. Okay, Mr. Tolbert. Have this filled. Follow the instructions I gave you and call me if you have any further problems. Um, what is this stuff? A cycler. It's fairly new. Would you like it to bill you, Mr. Tolbert? Um, no, I'm going to pay cash. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I see you've met Lauren. So how to get settled? Have you found a place to stay? I rented an apartment. I haven't seen it yet. Well, if you have any problem, get in touch with Dave Fairmont. He heads up most of the development that goes on here. Well, I don't need much. I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, go through the file. Get familiar with the patients. Starting with him? What about him? A cyclovir. Isolated case. One of the summer people. Oh, by the way, the uh, local paper wants to do a little profile on you. 
Steve, that's the last thing I need. There's no need to get into that. Just a way of letting the Islanders know who's filling in for yours truly. Have you had a chance to look around? Uh, a little. Hardly what you've been used to at St. Matthews. I want you to know I appreciate this. Don't worry about it. You must have taken some flack. Yeah, you're not the most popular guy in the American College of Surgeons. Lauren, I'm going to run over to the club. I'll be back before I take off. Relax and enjoy your summer, Tom. Thank you. Got to get things moving here. We're selling Paradise Isle, not downtown Philadelphia. We're set apart from the mainland. We don't have pollution, filth, traffic, noise. That's what this place is all about. It's clean. It's pure. It's a better way of life. Now, Nick, the word in the ad copy is Paradise. All right, can you remember that? Frank, I want a list of all of our clients. Every deal we're even close on. All right, come on over here, Bob. Let's look at our list. Darling, I will have you know that I have just demolished this snip of an adolescent. Six two, six <laughs> love. Who says I can't play with the kids? Not me, ever forbid. I bet you let her win, didn't you? No, actually, Dad, she was quite a tiger. Oh, <laughs> well, I just saw Lisa Corwin. She was looking for you. I told her to go down to the courts. Okay, well, I'll see you both later. Bye, honey. Bye, Mom. Well, you can say goodbye to your daughter's undivided attention. Those two have a whole year's worth of gossip to catch up on. Wait till you see how Lisa's grown. I'm afraid she'll have something to gossip about. Hey, Joanna, you're looking radiant as usual. Why, thank Steve, you. I thought the rainbow trout would be an endangered species by now. So I'm on my way. I just stopped by for our last update. Mmm. You want to be depressed? Come on, I'll show you the figures. I'll see you later. Excellent. What about the new units? Any movement? No, it's still too early. Jack Waltz thinks we ought to come down 20000 on the base price. Oh, forget about it. That's a big mistake. Oh, just a suggestion. I'm sorry. But... Look, Steve, I know you've got as much tied up with this as anybody, but this is the wrong time to start lowering the price. It's like holding out a big sign saying, condos in trouble, get them cheap. OK, you're in the developer. Only some of the guys are getting a little nervous. What do you want you to think about? Come on, Katie, give. I want the Billy Hildebrand story. Every luscious, incredible detail. Come on, Lisa. Let me down. There's nothing to tell. Nothing to tell? Nothing to tell, Katie? That's not what you said in the letter you wrote. Shall I quote? I think this is it, Lisa. Here's the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. Hey, this is moi, your best friend, remember? I thought we were supposed to tell each other everything. We broke up. Oh, gosh, Katie, I'm sorry. What happened? Yeah, levels. Bring it through. Go ahead. Again. Uh-huh. And your knees. Good. We'll try one, huh? OK. All right, keep it level. Good. Good. Oh. Again, come on. Not bad. I'm so embarrassed, really. No, no, yeah. don't be. Look, at the end of the summer, we'll have Billie Jean King thinking twice about her coming back. Come on, Tommy, I'll buy you a drink. <sighs> Dragon Lady's waiting. But I'd like to. You're lost, Missy. Whoa! Early. Look, why don't you schedule toward the end of the day sometime? How about Thursday? My husband will be on the mainland. On business. Yeah, how about Thursday? I'll rearrange the schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mrs. Gilman! What are we having? What are we having? We're having macaroni and cheese.
Maggie and I... Uh, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I can't get a sitter. No, I don't want you to do that, Re really. Um, no, it's not that. It's just that I need some food to sleep. Dirk, please, I can't. for Steve Holliston. Here? On Paradise Island? That's right. Hot damn! I mean, I thought you'd own the Mayo <laughs> Clinic by now. Well, I thought you'd own Wimbledon. Oh, you give me time. Okay. Hey, you see this guy sitting here? I mean, this guy saved my career. I mean, you know that little scar I got on my elbow? I mean, I told you about the time I beat Borg. This guy totally rebuilt my elbow so I could do it. This man's a genius. <laughs> He's exaggerating. Actually, I'm only a virtual soul. <laughs> hey, you here with anyone? No, I just came in to grab some dinner. Well, hey, come on. There's got to be someone here for Kyle. Uh, how about Sally? Sally's like Kyle. Sally, hold it. Sally, hey, hey, hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you going to do? Are you going to order my dinner for me, too? Hey, in this place, not even the cockroaches eat alone. But it's just the three of us, all right? And listen, don't you let his mild mannered exterior fool you. The doctor here and I have done some serious part here together. <laughs> I asked her to leave because what we have to talk about is strictly confidential. I won't tell anybody. You're my patient. I respect your right to privacy the same as I would anyone else. What you have is genital herpes. There's no cure yet, but it's controllable. And with understanding, you can lead a perfectly normal life. Katie? There's no cure? It's a virus, Katie. The symptoms go away, but the, the bug sort of hides in an area near your spine called the sacral ganglia. Sometimes it flares up again. We don't know exactly why. I mean, this is going to happen over and over? Not necessarily. I heard that you could get cancer. Your chances of getting cervical cancer go up. So it's important to get more frequent pap smears. What about having babies? I heard that they can die or they can become retarded if they get herpes from the mother. Well, that's true, but it's rare. And it doesn't have to happen. It should never happen. If the mother knows she has herpes and is having an active outbreak when the babies do, the doctor performs a cesarean delivery. And the dangers are almost completely eliminated. You're going to have plenty of healthy kids someday, Katie. You make it sound like it's no big deal. All the most dangerous things about herpes can be avoided. Why do I feel like my life is over? Well, probably for the same reason that a lot of people have an odd reaction whenever you mention the word herpes. They laugh nervously. They turn away in revulsion. You know why? Because you get it by having sex. You might feel frightened, guilty, even embarrassed. Katie, I can treat the disease. I don't know that I can help you with those other feelings, but I'd like to try. But I can tell you this, they're far more dangerous than the virus. Let go. 
Will you come back so we can talk? What'd you do here? You like it? What's the matter with the dishes that were here? They were ugly. We're only gonna be here for the summer. Couldn't it have waited? I wanted everything to be just perfect. Besides, we'll take them with us wherever we go, and we'll always remember where we first used them. Mr. Nicholas Todd, you are getting to be an old fuddy-duddy. Now, unless you think this lady is too big and fat and pregnant to make love to, why don't you give me a big sloppy kiss? Dr. Holliston needed someone to fill in for him while he was on vacation. I got the job. Well, I suppose there's quite a change of pace from a big mainland hospital like St. Matthews. Hallelujah. Sure. But I suppose we've got a lot of the same problems here as they have anyplace else, right? Medicine is medicine. Somebody gets sick, they need a doctor. Well, sure, everyday kind of medicine. What about the big health issues? Things that are, uh, you know, of epidemic proportions. I'm not sure I know what you're driving at. I'm a reporter, doctor. Couldn't help but notice. Just reading up. Keeping current. Oh, so you're saying that we don't have that problem here in Paradise Isle. Herpes is a national epidemic. Viruses don't respect boundaries. The people of Paradise Isle are as susceptible as anybody else. Maybe even more so, wouldn't you say? Especially given our lifestyle here. Look, this was supposed to be a get to know your visiting doctor interview. I think we should keep it that way. Why? I thought the enlightened, intelligent point of view was to educate the public about herpes. I mean, they've got clinics that have sprung up all over the place. Newsletter, even dating services. Maybe you don't agree with all that. As a matter of fact, I do. Saturdays, huh? Just till noon. Then it's off to the beach and curl up with a good book. You know, you curl up with me instead, I could manage to cancel my tennis game with the doc. Don't <laughs> give up, baby. Good night. Tommy, your idea of a date is the shortest distance between a dinner table and a bed. I don't think so. You know, you rush the net the way you rush the ladies, and I don't stand a chance. He doesn't stand a chance anyway. I heard that. I know.
Hello. <laughs> what are you doing here, Tommy? Last I heard, you were out in the circuit playing the tour. Who needs it? What, living out of a suitcase? Hustling endorsements? You're hoping that McEnroe's got a cold in the first round when you play him. <laughs> ah, this is a sweet deal. You know, I spend a couple of hours a day teaching the backhand to middle-aged ladies. And the rest of the time, it's beach and boogie. I mean, hey. Yeah. You know where I live? No. On an 80-foot yacht, because some skillionaire that I give lessons to wants a boat babysitter. I mean, anyone who can't be happy being a tennis pro on an island full of beautiful women is either <laughs> stupid or dead. Well, you're neither one of those. What about you? Why aren't you on the cover of Newsweek or something? Who needs it? <laughs> Speaking of beautiful women, <laughs> Dr. Kyle Richardson, Marsha Sarno. Marsha's been working here a month. She can't keep her hands off me. Hello. Hello. I've warned her. Told her I'm dangerous. Ah, but you know how they can get. <sighs> All right, Marsha, you win. Whenever you say. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, I gotta pay my dues. Uh, Marsha, you can put his order on my tab and. No, you gotta quit hanging all over me. Dr. Richardson. Yes. Uh, you're subbing for Dr. Holliston. That's right. My son has an earache. I, I was going to bring him in. Well, I'll be happy to take a look at him. Thank you. You know, you and I almost met once before. It was the first day that I came here. You were on the ferry. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember. And you almost ran me over. Oh, that was you. That was me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Does <laughs> that mean you're going to charge me more? Um. Hello? Oh, hi, Frank. Uh, listen, can he call you back? We're barbecuing. I... Hello, Frank. Is he close? Well, what happened this time? Oh, yeah, they'll be back. All right, I'll talk to you about it. Dave, what is it? Nothing. Well, it's something we can see you're upset. Two more deals just fell through. What do you want to do, celebrate? Dave, don't shut us out. We're a family. If you've got a problem, we've all got a problem. Let's talk about it. Maybe we can help. What are you going to do, buy a condominium? Maybe turn the economy around? There's some things a family conference won't help. I'll get the drink. I'm sorry, Princess. The old skipper broke one of his cardinal rules. Never bring any trouble to him from the office. I'll make it okay with you, Mom. Hey, come on, no big deal. See what he did? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Now you're more than fine. You're perfect. I don't know. Um, this island, a new job. 
Everything's happening so fast. Nick, my dad got you this job because it's a chance for us to go someplace. Your dad got me this job because he wasn't satisfied with his daughter being married to a guy who works in a print shop. And he got us his house for the summer so that we could be together. Well, he was just trying to help. Well, I don't want his help. If you don't like me the way I am, then why did you marry me? I married you because I love you. Only you won't let me show you anymore because I can't get you to touch me. And that's not because of your job or, or my father or this island or anything else. Nick, why won't you make love to me? Okay, what we got here is a genuine ear infection. So I think what you probably need, Jim, is a genuine lollipop. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Go ask Lauren, okay? More antibiotics at 25 bucks a bottle? I have samples. Oh, no, that, that's okay. I didn't. <laughs> We're not starving. No problem. Uh, have them take all of them. The directions are on the bottom. Marsha, I'd like you to have dinner with me sometime. How do you know I'm not married? I asked Tommy. Look, whatever he said about me, whatever it is, it's not true. He told me you weren't married. I asked because I was interested. M Marsha, I'm new on this island. I don't know anybody. I hate eating alone, which is what I've done every night this week. Have I offended you? No. Okay. Nick, would you like it better if we stayed in the apartment on the mainland, commuting out here every day to work? been happier if I'd stayed there. Connie, I said I love you. Show me. Problem? No, it's not. You gave this interview, didn't you? That's right. This is a resort island, Doctor. Perhaps you saw the sign on the landing. Leave your troubles on the mainland. Well, evidently a lot of people didn't. Just what the hell do you think you were doing? You turned a simple interview into a scare story on VD. All of a sudden we've got an epidemic here. I didn't say that. We're paying enormous amounts of money to promote the image of Paradise Isle, and you're trying to make this it... This has nothing to do with selling condominiums. This is a very serious health problem. But we don't have to publicize it, do we? Yes, we do. This is a place where people come to let loose, to relax. Casual sex, casual relationships, it's a damn breeding ground. And a damn lie. You have no right to drag the people who don't... If you're telling me to keep quiet, you're wasting your time. I have a responsibility as a doctor. And you have a reputation as a big mouth. Lisa, 
I just don't want to go out. Katie, what's with you? It's probably because you broke up with Billy Hot Spit. Hell the brand. What if it is? Because it's stupid, that's why. You know, you've been on some other planet for like two weeks now. I'm trying to do you a favor, you know? Thanks a lot. But Katie, don't forget to be back by five to help me with dinner. Tonight? Of course tonight. Your father's having guests. I want the whole family here. Oh, Mom. A bunch of us are planning on going to the Jug and Anchor tonight. No, you're not. Daddy, it's just a disco. I know what it is, and you're not going. Come on, Lisa, let's get out of here. She's growing up. I know. I know. We dated all through high school and then just got married three days after graduation. Um, all well, my girlfriends were single, meeting new people. Starting new careers. I was starting a family. I was a foreman on some of the construction around here. I thought we had a pretty nice life. What happened? Oh. He ran off with one of the family people. So? Now I'm the one who's single, meeting new people, trying to start a new career. Well, it seems to me you're handling it all remarkably well. Thank you. Well, what about you, Doctor? How did you come here? Summer of sand and sun? No. I needed the job. It was the best offer I had. Also, the only offer. Oh, come on. A doctor with no job offers? I'm sort of laying low until it all dies down. And then you'll go back to the big city? Probably. But you'll continue your interrupted but inexorable quest for the Nobel Prize, right? <laughs> it's signed my secret heart. Did you get into a lot of trouble? Sorry, I didn't mean to cry. No, 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 please. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you know. I want Listen, you to know about I want... me. I want you to know about me. And I want to know about you. Yes, oh, oh my goodness. It's getting late. I have to get home. I promise the visitor. Um.
cake? I don't know. It touches the flu, I guess. Well, it's just that you have a talk for a while, and I thought maybe we could, uh, you know, get together again. Sure. Yeah, I'll give you a call, okay? I just want to know if I was contagious or not. It's not that simple. Uh, chances are that you were okay, but you can't be absolutely sure. Um, but the uh, symptoms were all gone. <laughs> Look, why don't you just come in and I'll examine you? Well, if you can't be sure, then what difference would it make? Why won't you tell me who you are? If you're afraid that you've infected someone... I didn't say that. All right. All right, I'm sure everything is fine. There is nothing to be ashamed of. If you'll just come in, understand why I'm afraid to touch her. What am I supposed to say? That I slept with some other woman? She can't handle that. I don't remember you being so worried that night about what to tell her. Shut you know, up. You just had to have your last thing. You said shut up! trouble for this. You better take that off. These photos are good. Did you take them? Yeah. One of the 12 careers I've started. Oh, uh, listen, I have a weird and unprecedented request from the peanut gallery. He wants you to kiss him goodnight. I'd like that.
Good night, Sam. They're going to come back again. Go to sleep. We have been engaged about eight months when everything hit the fan. So she thought she was going to marry the next Michael to Bakey. In fact, she's engaged to him now. <laughs> You've got walked out on, too. Welcome to the club. Just a couple of victims. Huh? Oh, thank you for being so nice to Bob. That's not called for. Oh, yes, it is. I think he's been needing a bristly face to kiss. How about you? Kyle, don't. Marsha, what's the matter? It's not you. Well, there's nobody else here. Look, I like you. More than a little. I admit it. I want to hold you. I'd like to kiss you goodnight. Shake hands. Anything. No, I won't stop it until you give me some kind of explanation. Well, I don't owe you any explanation. This is who I am, and nobody asked you to come around. Marcia, what are you talking about? This island is crawling with sex, if that's what I was interested in. I think you better go. What? Marcia, Kyle, please. Sure way. I'm sorry, I have no listing for that. You sure there's no listing? No, I'm sorry, sir. Well, try the new ones. Maybe he's just here for the summer. No, I'm sorry, sir, but we have no such address. No one, no such address. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and I get a message from Dave Paramount about some newspaper article. I thought we understood each other. Steve, do you remember a young guy that came here the day I arrived? You treated him for herpes. 
Kyle, did you hear what I said? This is his file. I think he left a false name, a false address, and I think he called back, worried about being contagious. You think? I saw him again tonight on the Midway. He had a very pregnant girl with him, was probably his wife. You don't know that. You're not even sure it's the same man. You saw him once for less than a minute. Steve, he gave you a false name. That means he doesn't want anybody to know. What if he hasn't told her? Hold it. No. You called him an isolated case. Listen to me. I found 12 others in the file, Steve. 12 in the last six months. They warned me that you were a troublemaker, Kyle. Haven't you made enough enemies already? I think we have to find him. I'll check it out. I want you to forget about it. <laughs> no way. I want this crusade to end here and now. No more interviews, no more statistics. Or... Give yourself a break, Kyle. What are you doing, Princess? The old skipper's ready to hoist sail and eat the second mate. Daddy, I really don't feel like sailing to some dumb island. Hey, yeah, look, I know I've been a little rough on you lately, particularly the other day. I'm sorry. What are you doing, you kid? You get up there, I mean, all alone. You're like a uh, hermit. Talk to me, Princess. Daddy, why don't you just go sailing? I'm going to be just fine here. Honey, I know we... We kind of got out of the habit of talking. I've been so busy lately with the condo project and everything. I know you have to work. You don't have to apologize. Well, I wasn't apologizing. I'm feeling sorry for myself. Last couple of years, you've grown up quite a bit. And I haven't been around to see it. A couple more years, you're going to be gone. I'm not going to be gone. I'm never going to leave this house. Sure you will. You'll find some nice young guy, and he'll wave goodbye just like that. Look, come on, why don't we go boating? I'll let you take the tiller like you're used to, and I... Daddy? Do you remember when I went out with Billy Hildebrand? Yeah, what about? I know you don't like him very much. Well, it wasn't that I disliked him. I... Yes, it was. You don't like anybody I go out with. That's what I don't understand. Well, honey, it's, it's because I love you that... I don't want to talk about it right now. Why can't we talk about it now? All right, I understand. You wanted to go out with him because he's a football star, an older guy, and he had a teenage crush. It wasn't a teenage crush. Katie, I, I, I tell you, I don't want Daddy, to... Daddy, I went to bed with him. I'm sorry. I just... I feel like you have a right to know. I, I just... I want to sit down. I want to talk about it now. Not now. When? Daddy, when? When is it a good time? <gasps> Pregnant? Hmm? No. But I love him. We gotta get going. Are they coming with us or not? Daddy, wait. There's something else I gotta tell you. That's enough! Daddy! If you're not out there in five minutes, they'll leave you without you. Daddy, wait!
okay? Then just give me a shot or something, Kyle. What the hell is wrong with you? This isn't syphilis or gonorrhea. You can't cure it with antibiotics. How much do you know about herpes? Not much. I hear people talk. Okay, pal. Lecture time. Tommy, there are two types of herpes virus. Type one is common, like a cold sore or a fever blister. Type two is what you got, genital herpes. I can't cure it, Tommy. I can only treat the symptoms and give you the facts. Well, I don't like the facts. The facts don't care. You've got herpes. That means you have to tell the women you're going to go to bed with before you have sex with them that if you're having an active outbreak, they'll probably get it. Great. How am I supposed to know when I'm contagious? OK, the active period is called viral shedding. You're contagious from just before that, during a period called the prodrome, when you have a tingling or a burning sensation. Then in a couple of days, the area becomes inflamed, blisters form, rupture, dry out. It usually takes about 48 hours. And then you wait until the lesions are completely healed. What about the pain? Tommy, your best medicine is your own body. With each active outbreak, your immune system creates antibodies to fight the virus, which means in all probability that each successive outbreak would be less severe. Each successive outbreak? Nobody knows what causes them. Stress, lowered body resistance. You may never have another outbreak, or you could have it again and again. Why me? Why anybody, pal? It's a bug. It doesn't care who it infects. Oh, yeah. My sweet deal. Ladies at the yacht. Beach. You take away my boogie time, and I'm nothing but a tennis shoe salesman with a tan. Nobody said you had to stop. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, I've always wanted to make love to someone with the plague. Sure bet, Kyle. I don't remember inviting you in. I don't blame you or anything. I mean, I'm the worst. I know it, you know. You think you could, um, like, forgive me? For what? God, Katie. I'm your best friend. I mean, you needed help, but I, I don't know. I, I freaked out on you. Well, you're not the only one. I told you folks. No. Oh, I tried talking to my dad. I did. But he wouldn't listen. So I I trashed the room. I tried writing these letters to Billy. 
I can't send them. I feel so dirty and disgusting. What am I going to do? Oh, no. Poor kid. He must be going through hell. You really hurt me. I know. I know. Kyle, I've got a lot to say and not enough nerve to say any of it. So if you could just bear with me, please. Okay. I know I said that I don't owe you any explanations, and maybe I don't. But I've been so miserable the last few days. I got used to playing the singles game. And I was pretty good at it. No one night stands. You know. Nothing earth shattering, but uh, pleasant. And before I met you, I was dating a lawyer. We'd gone out several times. And the last night we were together. Well, then, what is it? I should tell you a long time ago when, uh, when we first went out. I didn't know we'd ever hidden it. Then when I realized I, uh, I cared for you, I was just afraid. Afraid of what? I'm not active right now. It's not contagious. I, w I wouldn't do that to you. And that's why the other night when you were to touch me, I freaked out. If you're afraid he may have given you the disease. No, it's not just that. Don't you understand? I'm afraid. I'm afraid that it's going to affect every relationship that I have or that I will ever have, as I'm afraid of projection. Marcia. Mm -hmm. 
virus. A bug. I've seen what it does because I happen to be a doctor. I've seen it destroy the way people feel about themselves, about others. Only now. Threatening to destroy the way you feel about us. Of course, I don't want that to happen. my brother Jack and me fishing every summer. But this year we decided to come here instead. You know, the whole family. It's been great. I mean, this place is really neat. Sounds like you guys are really close. Yeah, we are. Good. I mean, don't get me wrong. We've had our troubles and all, but, you know, things work out. Listen, though, you could go back to the party if you want. We'll just do some dancing and stuff. Oh, no. Uh... That's okay with you. I just like to sit here. Yeah, me too. Okay. Being kind of gives me a pain anyway, huh? <laughs> we kind of think alike, you and me. Nice. Usually you don't expect that on a blind day. I've enjoyed tonight. I'm glad we went out. I'd like to do it again sometime. I mean, I think, uh, I think you and I could be real nice together. Oh, sorry, I guess it's wrong. Oh, no, you didn't. Um... Well, I might as well tell you now because sooner or later you're going to find out and then you're not going to want to have anything to do with me then. Tell me what? I have herpes. Seems like all I do is tell people that. You feel like your whole life is ended. You feel like you'll never be clean again. Boy, the first time you have to tell someone like Diane. And sometimes they run. Sometimes they just sort of vague out. Sometimes, more and more, they understand. Hey, 
club. Yeah, he's here. Dick, you. Hello. What? Honey, are you sure baby's not due yet? Okay, well, where are you? On the mainland? Um, okay. Uh, uh, go on over to the hospital. I'll catch the next boat over and I'll uh, meet you there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, she just went into labor. I gotta go. Hey, good luck. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Sorry, buddy, I'm in a hurry. Uh, I have to talk to you. It's very important. Not now, man. Young fellow that just walked out of here. What is his name? Oh. Nick? Nick Todd? Uh, how do I get in touch with him? He works in uh, public relations. But he's not there. Try the ferry. His wife's on the mainland. She's just went into labor. <laughs> Anything, hospital, clinic, anything, man. Good, and, and get back to me as soon as you find it. Thanks. Well, wouldn't he have told her? Or wouldn't she have noticed the symptoms? Well, probably. But the symptoms could be masked. Lesions occur on the cervix. There are no nerve endings, no pain. She could be having an active outbreak and not even know it. Bear down, bear down, push. Push harder, harder, push, push harder. Push harder, be over Over in a minute. Yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Where? Okay, call the OR. Tell them what to look for. Mike, thanks. I owe you one. I'm going over there. I want to go with you. Come on. Your white one is a premature labor, and we found lesions indicative of herpes virus on the surface that may or may not have contributed to the premature delivery. We can't be certain. Is she aware that she's contracted the disease? No. Probably had a subclinical primary infection. She didn't feel the symptoms. It happens in a small percentage of cases. People have the disease, and they don't realize it. If we had only known in time, we could have performed a superior infection, and there would have been very little danger to the baby. Oh, my God. 
but the labor was too far along, it's too late for us to cure you. We had to deliver to the infected birth canal. She was shedding her fecitis. The baby became infected. I'm sorry. We're treating the infection as best as we can. But it's generalized and virulent. The baby's on life support system now. No. Can I get you anything? You knew about it. You had it and you knew about it the last time we made love. I wanted to tell you. Oh. But I was afraid. Why, Nick? I didn't know that this could happen. I didn't know anything about her piece. What was I supposed to tell you? That, that I cheated? That I'd gone out with another woman while you were carrying our baby? Would you have understood that? And instead, our baby is dead. understand why you needed to go to somebody else. I don't understand it at all. Doctor said that I can go home in a couple of days. I don't want you to be there when I get back. I mean it, Nick. I don't want you there.
I want to talk to you. What for? More threats? Joe Abbott called from the paper. He said something about you advertising a clinic for people with herpes. That's right. I put an ad in his paper. I'll do what I said, Kyle. I'll fire you and tell everybody why. Good. Good, Steve. Tell them the reason, too. His real name is Nick Todd. Spending the summer on the island, he worked for an advertising and PR firm. Guess whose development they're promoting? I don't know what you're talking about. Connie, his wife, it was his wife, by the way, gave birth to a baby girl. She was shedding virus, and she went into a premature labor. The baby's dead. My God. She had contracted the herpes from Nick because he didn't know any better. Like everybody else, he was too ignorant to tell her anything. Hey, Katie, Katie, come on. One set of tennis, I'm going to scream you. Please, I really don't want to Oh, come on, come on, come on, let's go. I can't. I don't have any clothes with you. Oh, so you borrowed something of your mom. She's got a whole locker full of stuff up there. Come on, let's go. All right. All right. Be happy about it, why don't you? Come on. Up here. I brought one of your outfits. I hope it's... What are you doing? Tell me. That was a letter to Billy! You had no right! Is this the doctor? Yes. I don't understand. I thought we knew each other. Mom, you don't know me. You haven't known me for years. Obviously not. Mom, I've been changing. I've, I've been feeling all these things that I don't understand. I just needed someone to talk to. Me. Why didn't you come to me? The only reason we're talking now is because you found my letter. Who else have you told about this? Just wait. Oh, my God. Mom, she's not going to say anything. All right. It stops here. From now on, we deal with this as a family. <sighs> no, we won't. I tried talking to Daddy. I tried to tell him. He doesn't listen. He can't even deal with it. From now on, it'll be just you and me. Mommy? I'm disgusting.
I called the local paper and told them I saw Tommy Considine sitting alone, I was an over photographer. Very funny. Mind if I sit down? Thanks. Warren, look, I know what you're trying to do. I would really rather be alone right now if you don't mind. Thanks. But thanks anyway. What do you think this is, TLC? Okay. You're a nurse. You work for Kyle. You've seen my record. You know I have herpes. You are a fool, Tommy. I've always been interested in you. You've only been interested in one thing. That's why I wouldn't go out with you. I have nothing against making love to someone. Once I care about them. If I get to know them well enough to care. already took the ad. I paid you. We were set. I don't want my money back. I want the ad to run in the newspaper. I can't have a clinic of people don't know about it. Hi. Thanks for coffee here at the club office. Nobody knew. I don't think it'll do any good. The newspaper refused the ad, so did the radio station. Well, legally enough. They will, we'll, we'll pass these out tomorrow. The club's having that huge promotion. Practically the whole island will be there. I don't think you should be involved in this. I think you should stay out of it. You work there. There's no point in both of us losing our jobs. I was with you when that couple's baby died. My life's been a nightmare because of this disease. I'm one of the people who needs to know. Besides, I think I'm falling in love with you. said you were going to do something about it. He's plastering the island with the uh, herpes clinic. Why not a leper colony? I'd stop him, Dave. You said you'd get rid of him. I mean, I won't stop him. He's right. People need to know more about this. Are you out of your mind? We're trying to save this project, and he's telling everybody the island is crawling with VD. That's not my concern. I'm a doctor that comes first. Well, that's great. That's very noble of you, Steve, but let me tell you something. The Paradise Bay project goes under. You can still practice medicine. Me, I'm belly up, gasping for air.
you were out there with me. A little. <laughs> you don't forget how it feels to think you're the next Connors or McEnroe. Is that what they are? <laughs> what they think they are. Twenty-two years old, making big money. Everyone telling them they're the greatest thing in the world, <laughs> especially women. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't always work out that way, though. One day you wake up and you're giving tennis lessons and selling warm-up suits instead of collecting prize money. You may realize things are different, but you hang in there anyway. Don't ask me why, you just do. Ow. Would you be willing to have dinner with me? Some place that we could just have a nice meal. Just sit and stare out at the ocean and just talk. I'd love that. <laughs> 30, 15. What can you do about it right now? I don't know, but I'm going to do something. I'm sure as hell I'm not going to sit here watching a tennis match. Now, of all times, he fixed this weekend. Steve. I'll be nothing more than a couple of sluts from the mainland. Makes out like it's all of us. Some kind of plague. Katie, honey, I'm sorry. Please don't leave. Why? Because I'm a part of this family? Please. Hey, Mom. You want me to stay? Hold me. Don't worry, Mom. You can't get it from holding hands. going on? If I can't stop you, I'll convince you to call this off. At least I can make it damned unpleasant for the people who come here. No, I don't believe These that. kind of people don't belong here. You have no right. No, you're wrong, Doctor. I have every right. But you and the others who don't belong here. I live here. I helped build this. Katie. Katie, what are you doing here? Go on back home. I'm going inside. Katie, Daddy. I want you out of here. Daddy, I'm going inside. That's why I'm here. Turn off those lights. No. Leave him on. I don't mind. Kitty, you don't know what you're saying. Why don't you want the lights on me, Daddy? You're going to leave them on everybody else, aren't you? I don't understand. I have herpes, Daddy. Sorry you had to find out this way. By coming here tonight, you've taken the first step in understanding and dealing with your disease. The worst thing about herpes is the less you understand, the less you know about it, the more likely it is to make you miserable. Herpes is surrounded by misinformation. Families can be torn apart, relationships destroyed, all because of a virus, a bug. There are drugs that can shorten the active outbreaks of the disease, and there are hopeful avenues of research that could lead someday to a preventative vaccine and eventually to a cure. But all that happens in laboratories and research centers. 
Here, in this building, we're going to learn how to deal with the emotional side effects of having herpes. How to release repressive feelings of guilt and anger. How to prevent the disease from destroying normal sexual relationships. And if we succeed in helping each other by sharing information and feelings, I hope you'll encourage others to join self-help groups like this. The single most important thing that you can get from this group is to learn that whether you have herpes or the person sitting next to you has it, you can live normal, healthy, respectable lives. All right? Now that's enough of that. Let's start with some questions. Does anybody have a question? 